Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I am Greg Simmons. I'm Assistant Director in Transportation and Public Works, responsible for the stormwater management program. And so last fall, we reported to City Council on the status <laughs> of our initiative to update our master plan via an informal report and a brief of the Council Infrastructure and Transportation Committee. And so I'm here this afternoon with Jennifer Dyke, who's senior planner in TPW Stormwater, was the project lead for this initiative, to report the outcome of that. Uh, we feel like we've had a very successful process and we're excited to share the results with you. And this is in anticipation of an MNC, which is scheduled to be on your agenda currently on May the 1st, which will recommend a approval of a resolution to adopt the Stormwater Master Plan and incorporate it by reference into the city's comprehensive plan. So the way we're gonna proceed, I'm gonna briefly just kind of refresh everybody on the program background, who we are, what we do, how we do it. That's the context out of which our uh, master plan update process came. And also as a part of that program background, I'm gonna take a moment uh, to respond to some of the recent questions and concerns about the development review process and drainage. Uh, then we're gonna move forward and talk about the goals that we set out as we uh, did the master plan update process. At that point, Jennifer will come up and take over the rest of the brief. She'll share with you the things that we did to try and make sure that what we were doing was fully informed by the stakeholders and also to share with you the major outcomes of the strategic plan update. We won't have time to go into a lot of the details. We just want to hit the highlights uh, that came out of that and then talk to you about how we plan to move forward with that. So let me talk a little bit about uh, the program background. So prior to 2006, when the stormwater program, as we know it, was established, uh, the only things really that the city was doing relative to drainage issues in the city was just a part of TPW streets, both on the maintenance side and the capital improvement side. It was almost exclusively a reactive sort of program, just responding to issues as they came up, had very little resources, no real strategy associated with it. Consequently, we had increasing drainage problems. In the summer of 99, there were a series of flood events that led for the first time to discussions uh, on the city staff and city council and the community about putting together a structured, well-funded, intentional, strategic program to address drainage issues in the city of Fort Worth. Nothing much came of that, though, until summer of 2004, when again a series of flooding events, including tragically some fatalities, led the mayor and the council to direct the city manager to establish a citizen's advisory committee to work with the city staff to look at the drainage issues, try and determine how the city should respond uh, to the drainage issues in the city of Fort Worth. About a year later, there was a recommendation that came to City Council to establish a fully funded, intentional, strategic stormwater management program funded through a stormwater utility fee revenue. Those revenues began being in, uh, collected in the summer of 06, and that's kind of when the stormwater program began. And as we started, initially we were focused on several things. First of all, we needed to understand what we were dealing with. There was very little readily accessible information that could be used to really guide and optimize a program to address the drainage needs. That's both on the maintenance side, understanding the system we had, as well as the flood risk side, understanding what sort of drainage issues we had around the city and what could be done to address. So a lot of resources and a lot of time and effort were spent in those early years just trying to understand what we were dealing with. On the maintenance side, again, we were exclusively reactive before that, and everybody knows and understands that any sort of maintenance program is much more efficient and effective being proactive, and so that was an initial focus, was to move from reactive to proactive. On the flood mitigation side, though we didn't really understand the magnitude and the nature and the overall scope that it was gonna to take to address drainage issues in the city, we knew it was really big. We knew it was gonna take a lot of money, it was gonna take a lot of time, and it was not gonna be affordable to be very aggressive in addressing those things. So we set as a goal to have a moderate capital improvement program to address drainage issues in the city. Knowing that we would not be able to fix everything in short order, some things we probably won't ever be able to fix, we also recognized that we needed to do the best we could to warn people of flood hazards that would continue to exist so that they could protect themselves. And finally, recognizing the amount of private development, the impact that private development can have on drainage issues, we knew we needed to have a very good program to assess private development, make sure that it was complying with city drainage standards. So that led to a program very simply stated that is setting out to protect people and property from harmful stormwater runoff. And the way we think about what we do is around four functional areas, pretty straightforward. We maintain the system. Again, we try and assess the hazards that exist out there, have a capital program to mitigate those hazards as much as we can afford. Those that we can't mitigate, we try and warn about so people can protect themselves. 
And again, on the development review side, we try and make sure that private development complies with our drainage standards such that it minimizes the impact it has, doesn't make things worse from a drainage standpoint. So these four things, again, are the sort of thing that as Jennifer makes the presentation, you'll hear about these four program elements, what we're doing, what we intend to do, major outcomes in each of these areas from a strategic basis as we move forward. Just to give you a little size or a little scale on our program, our budget this year is about $39 million. However, you'll notice that two elements of it, the debt piece, which is to service the debt for the revenue bonds that we've sold from 2007 to 2012, is about 23% of our budget. Corporate support, which is a term that we use to refer to the payment that the enterprise fund, stormwater utility like other enterprise funds, make to the general overall corporate needs of the city. Things like payment in lieu of taxes, street rental fee, administrative services fee. Also in that element is the amount that we pay with our partner, the water department, to run our billing system. So when you look at our $39 million budget, about 40% of it is on those two things. So when we talk about our strategy, we talk about what we're doing going forward, we're talking about about 23 million out of that 39 million that we have to work with. So I wanna take a moment this second, uh, at this point, as I mentioned, to address very briefly a little more detail on the development review side, since there've been some recent questions and concerns, just tell you what we've been doing, what's going on with that. It's obviously be, been something that's been questioned a lot. There've been a lot of concerns over the years. We feel like we've made a lot of progress. Just wanna briefly tell you how we see it. Uh, obviously, we're always, like every piece of the development permitting, process trying to balance things. We wanna be flexible, we wanna be responsive while we're trying to make sure that development complies with standards. Those things are somewhat in tension. Flexibility and responsiveness can work against timeliness, can be very costly. So we're always in the business of trying to balance these things together. And so we're working very hard on that. We think we've come a long ways and made a lot of improvements, but we're continuously seeking to improve in that. And one way that we try to keep uh, feedback loop going so that we're not just assessing it from our standpoint. Uh, we've got a couple of very good forums for doing that. The monthly development advisory committee includes a report from stormwater as well as the other elements of the uh, development permitting organization in the city. We get good feedback from there. We hear about issues from them. We get opportunities to dive into specific things and we've had a lot of good fruit come on that interaction. In addition to that group, we established about three years ago a group that we refer to as our Stormwater Liaison Committee. So this is a smaller group of developers, developer engineers, and people in the building industry that we meet with on a quarterly basis for three years now to talk specifically about the drainage review process. And again, that's been a very fruitful process. It's, it's unearthed a lot of things that we can do to work together, to partner together, to make this more effective and more uh, efficient for everybody. The overall feedback we're getting from those venues and forums is pretty positive. We're not perfect, we haven't arrived, but overall I think we've established a good rapport, a good level of credibility with the community and that it's bearing out in the progress we're making. We also have regular newsletters and training sessions. We just sent out a newsletter last month. This again allows us to communicate things to the community and to solicit input from them. And again, those sorts of things lead to opportunities to improve. In 2017, our customer satisfaction rating on the surveys that we send out, every time we complete a piece of the drainage development review process, overall was 4.3 on a scale of one to five. That doesn't mean everything was good. There were some criticisms, there were some low scores, and when those criticisms and those low scores happen, we reach out to the applicant, we identify what the issue is, we work with them to learn from them, to educate them, and again, it's been a really good opportunity for us to learn and grow and improve and help the community uh, understand our process. And I think council may recall in last fall, we actually, the drainage review process received an award from the Greater Fort Worth Builders Association for the progress that we had made in our program. And so that was very gratifying. Again, doesn't mean we've arrived. Still got a lot of work to do, always will, but that was a good sign that we were headed the right direction. A couple of specific things that we've been doing recently. We heard some questions and concerns about our lot grading standards and single family residential. So we established a task force of developers and developer engineers. We worked with them. We came up with some agreed upon revisions to our process and standards. That newsletter that went out last week announced those, those common uh, agreed upon revisions to our standards. So that was a successful process. And finally, one thing that we're doing right now, we have commissioned an audit of actual reviews. So we took 20 of the reviews that were completed in 2017 that ex experienced the longest, most complicated review process, we asked our liaison committee to pick an engineering firm to review these things, to audit. 
we picked an engineering firm and we picked a developer's engineer. We didn't want to pick an engineer that worked for us. We picked a developer's engineer. We gave these reviews to them and we asked them to look at them, to audit them, to identify the most common reasons for these things experiencing protracted reviews. The outcome of that we expect in May and we're really looking forward to that because again, we think that'll give us a good opportunity to figure out what, when things are taking long, what's making them take long, what's making them expensive, what can we do collaboratively with the development community to make this better. So <clears throat> we're working very hard. We really feel like we've got ourselves in a good position. We feel like we have credibility with the community and we're looking forward to continue to work on that. And I really encourage mayor and council members, when you hear questions or concerns, please let me know about those. Please identify the people who are concerned because I assure you I'll reach out to them very quickly and very directly to identify their issue. So I wanna just stop briefly at that spot on this particular topic before we go forward with the rest of the brief and see if there's any questions or comments about Carlos. this issue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Greg, I, I appreciate the information you've given so far. I know for my particular council district, I have uh, probably uh, been a bug in your proverbial ear a lot over you know flooding related issues <coughs> and stormwater related issues in my district. I, I do very much appreciate your responsiveness Jennifer's responsiveness and all staff involved. Uh, couple, uh, one question about the $1.5 million in, in, in warning. I know that you and I have talked about uh, that a little when it comes to um, repair and maintenance of existing warning signage and, and other measures. Uh, could you elaborate more on that? Sure, and it actually might be. Could we hold that question to the end? That's because fine. Because we got want to more to unfold about the bigger picture and we can come back to that. Uh, but I wanted to stop here at this point and just see if anybody had any questions specifically about our development review process. So, yeah. Nothing like that, but uh, just one comment also. Yes, I, I do appreciate you having in place that uh, committee, you know, of, um, of residents, you know, stakeholders there. You know, I, I appointed someone there, and they've been very positive in their feedback to me over the course of uh, work and considerations you've given. Yeah, so I do you. appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. Others? Okay. We'll All right. from Jennifer proceed. and see what else okay. is generated. Right. Okay. So back to the master plan update process. So as we started this master plan update process uh, a little over a year ago, we had several goals. Again, we had learned a lot of information in the early years of the life of the program. It was really time to take stock of that, integrate it, get input from others on it, figure out what it told us about the future and how to move forward in an effective fashion. And of course, the main name of the game is to try and take the resources we have, use them most effectively to address the community needs. So this was a good time to take stock of our program, line it up against the city's strategic goals, hear from the community about what they were looking for, and make sure we were moving forward to apply our resources to the highest priority needs throughout the city. And as we do that, of course, like everybody else, there's always going to be gaps. There's always more good things that we would like to do than we have resources to do them. So we want to understand those very clearly. We particularly want to prioritize them against each other because we want to be a program that's in a place that when the call comes to increase the service level in any given area, we already know what we're going to do. We know how to move forward with it. So this process gave us a really good venue for reviewing that and understanding that. Another thing it gave us an opportunity to do was try and get more consistent and standardized about a series of challenging issues that kept coming up. Jennifer will talk more in detail about those four issues as she gives the presentation, but we were dealing with some challenges. They kept coming up and we didn't really have policies that had been well thought out, that were intentional, that had been vetted with the right people. And so we wanted again to use this process as an opportunity to look at those things and move forward. We wanted to have something that we could use to adapt and move forward for the foreseeable future in the program. And again, we wanted to end up with something that our stakeholder group could put their thumb on, the city council would endorse, and really would guide our program for the future. So at this point, I'm going to ask Jennifer to come up and take you through the rest of the presentation. And I just want to take this opportunity to recognize Jennifer. She's been the project lead for this. It's been a really, really hard, complicated thing. She's done an absolutely tremendous job, and it's her professionalism and her excellence that have led to a really successful outcome. So thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Greg. Okay, so as Greg mentioned earlier, we really wanted community feedback on this. So the process that we came up with for our master planning process was really focused on getting community engagement. So we started with really first city engagement. So we coordinated with these groups on the screen to make sure we were hearing from more than just stormwater. We didn't want to work in a silo. 
And then also, so we didn't reinvent the wheel, we reached out to these communities on the screen and we did a peer community review. Uh, we identified cities that were comparable to Fort Worth and facing similar circumstances and challenges. And we use that information to help verify and validate our own internal program assessment and inform our planning process. And so then in addition to the internal and the peer community review, really the heart of our engagement with our, was with our stakeholder group. And so we had council appointed members and uh, we wanted to, to get full community representation since we were coming up with our full program master plan. And then also we had ad hoc representatives to make sure that we had representatives for all the different stormwater ratepayer categories. Um, and so we had a really um, intensive engagement process with the stakeholders we had four stakeholder meetings that were open to the public over a 10-month time frame and a lot of back and forth coordination with the stakeholders during this period in addition just to those meetings. And so I wanted to take a minute and recognize that we have a few stakeholders here um, supporting us today and if they could stand up. I know, um, so we got David Motherall, we've got Lee Nickel and is Rusty still here, Rusty Fuller? Okay, he was hiding right there. So I just wanted to thank y'all for your participation. So ultimately, the stakeholder group um, endorsed our planning process and then the outcomes that we'll be presenting to you today in the master plan. So we're really excited about that. So then, in addition to the stakeholder engagement, the public was invited to attend our stakeholder meetings and they could um, talk, verbalize comments at the end of the meeting and they filled out comment cards as well. So we use that information. We also had a um, website, we still have maintain that website where we put our meeting notes, we put PowerPoints, and we even put some audio from the meeting. So if somebody missed it, they could actually listen to hear what they missed. And we have the report up there right now, the draft report. And then we, uh, just to, we also, we advertised for those meetings really using social media next door, as well as we had an email distribution list for people who had expressed interest in stormwater projects in the past. So now I want to talk about our program major outcomes. Our master plan outlines the strategic direction for our program's next 10 years, and really that's considering the challenges that we identified with our internal and, and stakeholder engagement, as well as the feedback that we received. And so first I want to talk through the major outcomes for the four program elements Greg talked about. We maintain, we mitigate, we warn, we review development. And then I want to talk through the major outcomes for the policy needs that he mentioned that we, one of our big reasons for doing the master plan update. So our first program element is our maintenance program. And our master plan identified several um, initiatives regarding the maintenance program, but the most significant initiative was on storm drain rehab. So when the stormwater program was started, our initial focus was almost solely on uh, flooding and erosion mitigation projects. And so now we need to ensure that a prominent piece of our program is really focused on storm drain rehab. We have over 60 miles of, of um, storm drain lines that are over 70 years old. And so the storm drain rehab will reduce the likelihood of large scale failures and make sure the storm drain system continues to function as it's supposed to. Um, so the big thing with this though is it doesn't provide any flood reduction <clears throat> mitigation benefits. Um, storm drain rehab is very expensive but it's so much of a top priority that in the future, we're gonna be shifting some of our funding from flooding and erosion mitigation projects to storm drain rehab projects. So our second program element is our mitigation program. And our current budget is roughly $11 million a year on these capital projects, but our mitigation needs far exceed our resources. And we know we have hundreds of millions of dollars of projects uh, where we need mitigation for flooding, erosion, and, and storm drain rehab. And so much of what we've learned about our drainage system and needs around the city for the first 10 years of our program um, has really given us this objective way to look at our needs and prioritize uh, what we need to do uh, so we can look at the benefits of all our, our different projects. So we're gonna be using this information in the future to refine our project prioritization to make sure that we're using our resources to address the most critical needs. And then also because of our limited resources, um, using this project prioritization we want to make sure that we're looking at smaller project execution. And when we need to look at big projects, we want to consider partnership opportunities and then look at the different pieces, um, phaseability of those projects, and look and see if each phase can have significant benefits by itself. <clears throat> so our master plan update will direct our future five-year CIP 
and our CIP identifies prioritized projects necessary to advance the purposes of the master plan. And so on the screen, these are just some highlights of some of our projects that are currently underway or they're going to, or plan to begin this calendar year. So our um, third program element is our warning program. And as I mentioned, we can't mitigate all of our hazards. It just costs too much. And so because of this, we need to make sure that we're effectively warning the community about our hazards. Um, as more and more advanced information becomes available, we want to make sure we're taking advantage of this information and providing the community with more real-time, reliable warnings of flood threats. And then also, we want to take a broader view of stormwater warnings by communicating about the channel erosion hazards as well. So the last program element is our development review program. And the feedback we received from our stakeholders in our master plan update process was that our current level of development review was appropriate. However, we did hear from several stakeholders from plan commission and from others in the community concerns about the potential adverse impact of private development, specifically in areas that were already flood prone. And so I'm going to talk about this in a few more slides when I talk about the development review policy need. Um, but right now for the immediate um, future, our plan is to maintain our current level of development review and look at the possibility uh, to refine some of our regulations in specifically flood prone areas. So those were the strategies um, associated with our four program elements. Now I want to talk through the um, major policy needs. They're um, listed up here on the screen. And so since the program started, the we've had a challenge of every time something comes to this, we didn't have a specific uh, policy. And so we didn't, we weren't able to standardize our decision making. So we needed policies so we can move forward and have a consistent approach for how we handle all of these issues in the future. Um, and so the, the master plan identifies these policy needs. It does not identify these specific policies. Those are all going to be an outcome of the master plan, and each policy will have a separate engagement process focused on that specific policy that's then um, developed into a vetted policy that's brought forward to decision makers for review and then implementation. So our first policy need is for a local floodplain policy. And I want to explain what I mean about local floodplain uh, using just one example here in the TCU area. So everywhere in the city of Fort Worth drains into some kind of stream or channel that drains into the Trinity River. So this is just one example here. In the TCU area, it drains north into Zoo Creek. And there's around 300 of these drainage areas in the city of Fort Worth. <clears throat> FEMA maps the floodplains along larger streams across the country. And so they map it along Zoo Creek. It's considered one, uh, one of the larger streams. And so if someone were to look at a FEMA floodplain map, they're going to see this area in red. So unfortunately, um, the city has these local floodplains like this area that you see blue, where the flood hazard is just as real in the FEMA floodplain. And these are unknown to many people in the city of Fort Worth, especially newcomers that move into an area. So what we're saying is, even though it's not a map on the FEMA floodplain map, it's still a floodplain. Um, and there's still risks that are just as severe. <clears throat> so these aren't shown on FEMA floodplain maps. And there's um, most of the people in the city of Fort Worth that have reported flooding to us are actually in a local floodplain. They're not in a FEMA floodplain. And the city has no special regulations related to drainage in these local floodplain areas like they do in FEMA floodplains. So the stakeholder group agreed that we need a local floodplain policy. And a policy once developed, approved, and implemented will improve the identification, communication, and planning for local floodplains and determine if and how local floodplains should be regulated and considered during the development review process. <clears throat> and while our master plans identify the need for the policy, again, we don't know exactly what the policy is going to look like, but our report outlines key policy considerations that will need to be taken into account when it's developed. And this is actually going to be uh, one of the first policies that we're going to start kicking off developing this year. And we've come up with a process to come up with a policy and, and vet it. And uh, it's going to involve a group, a small working group of stakeholders with city staff, um, a balanced interests, so we can come up with a, a focused engagement really on what this policy should be. 
And then we'll make sure that we're keeping council involved of this effort. And so our goal is to come up with a, a policy recommendation by early next year. So our second new policy need is for our private property channel erosion policy. And as it sounds, private property channel erosion is just erosion that's happening along streams or channels where the city has no ownership or maintenance authority. And oftentimes, the owners don't have the resources or knowledge to know what to do about this erosion. So here, too, the stakeholder group agreed that we do need to have a policy regarding how we handle private property channel erosion. And the policy needs to address how we deal with current um, issues that are happening and then how do we try to prevent them from happening in the future. And just like the local floodplain policy, again, uh, we will we'll go through a separate process to vet our policy recommendations with a separate stakeholder group and then bring those recommendations to the decision makers for feedback and implementation. So our third new policy need is for a voluntary buyout policy. So oftentimes it's really cost prohibitive to mitigate flooding or erosion with these large scale drainage improvement projects. And so voluntary buyout is just one mitigation tool in our toolbox. Uh, buyout can impact neighbor neighborhood integrity though because it leaves gaps in a community um, and it does, it does remove taxable structures from that community. Uh, however, the vacant property can often be used to help reduce um, and mitigate flooding or erosion to other property owners in the neighborhood and it can be designed in a way that can add value as an amenity to that neighborhood. And so here too, like the other two policy needs, uh, the stakeholder group agreed that we need some kind of policy to tell us direction uh, about under what circumstances we consider buyout as a mitigation tool. And like the other ones, the effort to come up with this policy will be go through a vetted process to come up with recommendations that's brought to the appropriate decision makers for feedback and implementation. So those first three policy needs were for brand new policies. So the last one is actually a potential refinement to our existing development review policy. So as I mentioned earlier, when discussing the development review program element, we've been hearing concerns more frequently about the potential impacts of development on flooding and erosion, especially in areas that are already flood prone. And both residential and commercial property owners contact us fairly frequently um, because of their belief that new development has caused flooding or erosion and increased that on their property. <clears throat> in early 2017, the Plan Commission asked us to look into what we refer to as the cumulative impacts of development. And what we mean by that is that even though one single property might show that their development does not have impacts, the impact of all the new development can have impacts in the immediate area as well as further downstream. And so while the standards that we're using here at the City of Fort Worth are consistent with many other cities, both in the area and around the country, the concern about cumulative impacts is real and valid, and it's worth further evaluation to determine if we should be revising our standards um, to consider cumulative impacts while we're trying to maintain a, a flexible and um, timely review process. So given all that, the policy direction for a development review coming out of the master plan update is really to um, seek to find ways to reduce the risk of flooding due to development in flood prone areas and properly account for the impacts of cumulative development. And then look at the possibility that development incentives could be used to work with developers in the city working together to try to mitigate flooding, especially in these areas that are already flood prone. And so like the other three policy needs, we'll have a separate engagement effort for this as well, where we flesh out a fully vetted policy that's brought forward to the appropriate decision makers for review and feedback. So we, we're almost at the end, implementation. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that our, our book doesn't just sit on the shelf. We don't want our plan to sit on the shelf. Um, and so the um, purpose is we have had a stakeholder group since our program was formed in 2006. So we've revamped that stakeholder group and we're gonna be working with them as we start fleshing out all these policy needs and talking to them about these initiatives. So we'll have that accountability and we'll have working groups. We also wanna make sure that our master plan strategies are driving our annual business plan. So we'll be doing that. And then obviously beginning the implementation of the prioritized initiatives. And this is going to be a 10-year plan, so we know we can't just suddenly do all these 13 initiatives that are identified in the master plan tomorrow. Uh, but as our resources permit, we're going to be moving forward with these initiatives. I didn't talk about them all today, uh, only the key ones, but there's 13 initiatives that are highlighted in our master plan. 
And as mentioned earlier, we're going to be kicking off the local floodplain policy, the first one this spring. So with that, um, as Greg said, we're planning to have our MNC on May 1st for council to adopt the master plan and have it incorporated by <coughs> reference into the city comprehensive plan. Any questions or discussion? Carlos. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, one question uh, about the real-time warnings. Mm -hmm. uh, could you elaborate a little bit about that system? I know that there was a grant involved, I think, if I yes. remember correctly. Yes. How far along are you in that, and, and how accessible would that be to your average citizen? Okay. So I believe that we, uh, we're we actually pretty far along. I think we're planning to finish up maybe by the end of either this fiscal year or calendar year. And so what we have been doing is um, updating our how we, when, when all the flashers respond, uh, they all came to one tower, basically. So all the information. So we actually are put in a second kind of tower to gather that information. One, so we make sure that we're really getting all the information that's coming in. And then two, we're working on some websites that then will someday be, hopefully within the next couple of years uh, or sooner, be very public friendly where people can go online and see that information real time so they can make decisions about when they leave or when they leave the office or what direction to take. Um, another idea is we've talked to um, like the Waze app. Can we give the Waze app and let them know when there's roads that are closed where there's flashers so someone knows right away when they're going out and they're being redirected and they don't just end up at the flooded road. Um, so that is moving along. I think all we have left is one of three public meetings. Um, am I missing anything on that? That's what I wanted to hear, okay. and you know, certainly real time is a way to go. Yes. As much as Texas weather changes and how many people are traveling on our roads, you really need to know as quickly as possible. Yes. Thank you both. Thanks. Dennis? I, I uh, once, once again um, commend you for more than anything else your patience both of you in, in dealing with this. This is, uh, becomes a real um, heartburn issue for those residents that, that whose homes, as you know, as I know, get flooded uh, ankle deep in uh, water in their living room or knee deep even in some cases. But <clears throat> some of the, these policies uh, that, that have, have made a significant change in, in how you do business over the last uh, five, six years, especially with that, with the iSwim program and, and how we have massage that that uh, requirement to the point where it's almost flexible you know it's uh it's it's really working um, and the warning system as Carlos said is is right on target the hazard mitigation um, issues have been very creative and I applaud you for that as you know uh, I, I've told you that before I think that this voluntary buyout policy and the hazard minute hazard mitigation is, is going to make it in the absence of the fact that we don't have unlimited dollars to throw at this problem. So um, that's that's what's going to make this stormwater management uh, an, a, a great asset to the city at some point in the future. Thank you. Thank you both for this. Uh, you know, we've had lots of questions about stormwater through the years, and I do think that we're making good progress, and I think your partners in this really do too, and it was critical that we see where this is going forward. So you really have worked hard and developed a better, easier, more efficient program for everybody to use, and I think we've still got work to do, but we're a long way down that road. So thank you for the update. Thank Appreciate you. it.